Xerxes. It is suggested that you carry a number of objects with you to aid you in this task. The cloak, the White King's sword, the summoning book and the shield will be your best choices. On any moonless night, find a sizable field of grass. It does not need to be vast, but you must have room to work in. With a sword in hand, slice a pentagram into the ground, then stab it directly into the center and shout at the top of your lungs. I challenge the universe! One by one, the stars will wink out. The sky will become lighter as if the sun was rising, but it will not be blue. The heavens will turn a sickly crimson, arcs of red lightning flashing across the sky as noxious black clouds traverse the horizon. The sun will be a cold, dead ball of a grotesque brown hue. The earth will wither and die before you, turning into a barren wasteland of darkness, and houses will rot away and become sickening, haunted ruins. The pentagram will solidify into pure crystal, entombing the blade of the sword within. You will hear the most agonizing and terrible scream, a scream at once intensely animalistic, yet human. It will overpower you, and you will drop to your knees, ears bleeding from the terror. When the scream fades, and you regain your hearing, stand. Lo, rolling clouds will be seen to the north. They will approach swiftly. If you have the summoning book, use it. The pentagram will erupt in a column of flame, melting the crystal and freeing the blade. Take it, and don both cloak and shield, if you have them. Otherwise, pray for a quick death, as the coming onslaught will have the upper hand. When the clouds at last cover the earth, a legion of terrible beasts, neither living nor dead, will approach. If you have the cloak, they will not notice you. They will pass on by, allowing you to obtain the first strike. Lash out at the beasts. No matter what blade you might be using, they will be cleft asunder with one strike. But kill one, and the rest will take notice. They will be armed with all sorts of vicious weapons from all through the ages. From stone clubs to battle axes to assault rifles to weapons not yet dreamt of by man. They will attack, but you will defend. The shield, if you have it will guard from their attacks. Otherwise, you must dodge, parry, and do everything you can to stay alive. After the last of the creatures fall to the ground, they will dissolve into the earth. The clouds will fade, and you will feel a presence behind you. Turn around, swiftly. There. Surrounded by an aura of the blackest darkness that any mortal will ever see, is his avatar. It is nothing and everything at the same time. It will take on any shape he desires, and not even the objects you wield will be able to guard you against him if he chooses to attack. You may only do one thing. Ask him. Why do you do this? In a voice composed of every sentient creature that has ever been conceived in the known universe, he will answer. He will describe every single object and every seeker that has tried to claim them, and failed miserably. He will tell you where the remaining objects are located, and which seeker carries them, and where that seeker can be found. 
His speech will take several months to listen to, but you will be unable to turn away, entranced by his voice that is both beautiful and disgusting, repulsive and seductive. And, at last, he will vanish, leaving behind only the barren wasteland you stand on, and the knowledge of the objects that lingers in your mind. You will undoubtedly collapse out of sheer exhaustion. You will awaken in the bed of the area you call home. A soft whisper will enter your mind. Bring them together. Tightly clenched in your hand will be a small serrated dagger with unintelligible script engraved on it. The metal will not be of this world, or even this universe and no amount of testing will be able to reveal its properties. This dagger is Object 337 of 538. Its blade will sever the wicked, 